All right, good morning, everyone. It's good to see everybody again this morning. Hope you all had a, a good week. We're going to go ahead and pick up uh, where we left off in question 32 of the larger catechism. But before we do that, let me uh, open, us, open us up in prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Lord's Day, this day that you have provided us as a day of rest. We pray that you would be with us this morning as we uh, study your, this catechism that you have uh, provided for us. And uh, as we study it, we pray that we would draw closer to you, learn more about you and your word that you have preserved throughout the ages, Lord. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, last week we looked at um, how the grace of God is manifested in the second covenant, um, and specifically how he offers to sinners a mediator, right? And how life and salvation is provided um, through him. This morning, Lord willing, we're going to finish out the rest of the question, okay? And so just by way of reminder, I'll read the rest of it, um, and requiring faith as the condition to interest them in him, promiseth and giveth his Holy Spirit to all his elect to work in them that faith with all other saving graces and to enable them unto all holy obedience as the evidence of the truth of their faith and thankfulness to God and as the way which he hath appointed them to salvation. Okay, so the second main portion of our uh, answer this morning is that this covenant requires spirit-wrought faith and produces qualities of the Spirit. So let's unpack that first portion surrounding our faith. Okay? That, the, the fact that faith is required. Okay? You ever hear people say that you just, you just got to have faith? Right? Uh, I, I kind of find this... 